Things Judges Consider in Child Support Cases. That is our topic for today, part of the series, Mediation Tips by Fran Brockstein. Welcome to the Lawyers and Mediators International Show and Podcast by InstantMediations.com, where we discuss law and conflict resolution topics to educate both professionals and everyday people. Catch regular episodes on YouTube, the Instant Mediations app, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Just remember, nothing in these episodes constitutes legal advice, so be sure to talk to a lawyer as cases are fact-dependent. Hey everyone, this is Mac Pierre-Louis, attorney, mediator, and arbitrator working throughout Florida and Texas. And Natalia Łowska-Czajka, advocate and mediator from Warsaw, Poland. I'm Fran Brockstein, an attorney and mediator in Texas. Hey Fran, hey Natalia, good to have you guys back again. And uh, we are talking today about child support and what judges consider. And the reason we're doing this uh, is because Recently, we had done another video with Fran on, and I'll share my screen so you can see. It was titled, Things Judges Consider in Child Custody Cases. And so that video became pretty popular, and a lot of people watched it and got a lot of information out of it. And so we were following that up with one on child support, on things that judges consider in a child support case. And I think... If you're still interested in checking out what Fran had to say when we were um, dialoguing about this back some back in July, actually, this is just uh, 2021, you can go head over to the Lawyers and Mediators International YouTube channel. That's very simple. It's just youtube.com forward slash lawyers mediators. And check out that video, Things Judges Consider in Child Custody Cases. And then you can get educated on that. But this time, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to turn over to Fran to talk a little bit about what do judges predominantly in your jurisdiction, which is Texas, Fran, what do they consider the most when it comes to different types of child support cases? And I'll lay the groundwork this way. We think there are three general types of child support cases, either an establishment case where you are doing an order for the first time, a modification case where you are changing the terms of the order to increase or decrease, and finally, an enforcement case where you are trying to enforce child support because somebody's not paying or you're trying to confirm arrears. So establishment case, modification case, and enforcement case. Fran, why don't you go ahead and share with us your thoughts on what judges consider the most in these three different types of child support cases. Well, years ago, I heard a cute story that good judge, uh, good attorneys know the law. Great attorneys know the judge. Judges are human beings. And they all, they follow their, when they take the bench, they sign an oath that they will follow the laws of the United States and the state of Texas where I live. And so they look in Texas on the, it's based on the Texas Family Code, and it's all sources of income, not just your, just your first job. It could be, I had a gentleman who didn't work, but he owned many office buildings in downtown Houston, and he didn't want to pay child support because he didn't work. He was a multi, multi-millionaire, and he, his office buildings generated quite a lot of money every year, so his child support was based on that. So that's, um, in Texas, it's based on what the parent makes, not necessarily always the child's needs. Um, a child with a physical or mental or learning disabilities might need extra help, such as tutoring, or say if they have physical disabilities, their equipment, they have to go to doctors, all of those things are factored in. Natalia, what do you think about this? What happens in Poland? Um. Mm, thank you for that, Fran. Um, we have it clear in the law that the first um, criteria is the child's needs. And the second is parents' ability of making income and um, of the parents' assets. 
this is interesting because then um, it is like they are judging the um, parents' net worth in terms of the assets they have, um, and that can impact. Um, Absolutely, the child support, how it is being adjudicated. Imagine someone living in a $10 million villa and staying on the state benefits. Wouldn't it be considered that there has to be something done in terms of someone living on a very, very uh, high level of living, level of expenditure, and then actually not earning any money and trying to pretend they are so, so poor that uh, they need uh, outside external support to uh, maintain themselves. So the level of li living is also something that can be seen as a factor that influence because we also have a role that the child is entitled to have the equal level of living as the parent does. Yes, and Natalia, to that point about how the parents' standard of living, okay, is something that the judge considers, you know, when they're establishing child support or modifying child support, or I guess even enforcement of child support. Um, we some time ago did a video on this channel where, and I'll share my screen, uh, and you can again check it out on. The YouTube channel. And this one was an old video called Texas Zoom Court Mock Hearing, May 2020. This was right in the beginning of the pandemic. We did a mock uh, Zoom court hearing with a real judge and real lawyers uh, who basically came together to do a public service, which was um, show what Zoom court actually looks like so that people who were now getting used to um, going to court remotely can see how do you show up, how do you present evidence, and how do you uh, prosecute your case. So the topic on this video incidentally was, uh, here's the name of it, it's called, I need, a new, I need a child support decrease, but mom just saw my new Mercedes Benz. And the idea of this, of this, mock trial was where a, a father played by attorney Adam Hellick out of Houston uh, was fictitiously, you know, stating that he can't afford his child support because it's set too high and he just lost his job. And so he wants a decrease due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the closures that were happening. But the mother, you know, who was played by, Another attorney, she was coming across and basically saying, look, you can afford it because I just saw you driving a brand new Mercedes Benz. So is it fair? OK, so again, the talent is absolutely right. This is one of the things that judges consider, which is how do you live? And does that how you live uh, in a way prove what kind of income that you have access to? Because if you're, you know, living a really high life, driving a really nice car and are able to pay for utilities and mortgage and a whole lots of payments and, and the value of those monthly expenditures come up to be, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, where are you getting the money from? OK, it needs to be connected back to the source of income so that child support can be established on that. So it's no surprise that people may not want to pay full guideline child support could it get it can get pretty expensive but look kids gotta eat as the moms would say so let me stop sharing that but just a thought Fran what else do judges consider in child support cases well they consider all kinds of things um you know um how often the parent sees the child for example if a parent never visits then the other parent has to provide food, clothing, shelter, and entertainment 24 seven. And they take that into account. And they do take into account how you look when you show up in court. And I've told you previously, I've had people show up dressed to the nines, knocked out with jewelry, designer handbag, designer shoes, and then they claim they have no money. Um, and sometimes it's been interesting to see when someone doesn't pay their child support, 
and they put the handcuffs on the, the parent that's not paying, suddenly it's amazing. Money shows up. I've had it happen. And judges know it. The attorneys know it. You know, one guy claimed he couldn't borrow any money and his family was destitute. Well, when they put him in the back in a cell, within two hours, at least $10,000 showed up from his family. So they had it. They just didn't want to give it. And judges know that. They've been on the bench. They've heard it all. Believe me, everybody tries to hide assets. And usually it comes back like a boomerang and hits them in the back of the head and they regret it. What you need to be aware of is also the content you publish on your social media. And it's absolutely important because that can be showing your level of living, but also the content that shows certain likes and dislikes you have. For example, that wouldn't be advisable to publish something negative about the judges and judicial system. Uh, that would rather not be a positive thing just from the human point of view. Yeah, and we're not telling folks, by the way, hey, you can't ever post any new watch that you just got <laughs> because you're afraid that the mom's going to see it online and be like, hey, look, you see, they're rich. And I want to tap into that. It's, it's, uh, we have to remember that even though judges are human and judges can be fickle, in my experience, uh, there's still the law. Right. And each of our jurisdictions is going to have specific guidelines that helps establish what child support should be. Now, for some people, that might be great. Meaning in Texas, for example, we're not going to focus on assets as much like in Natalia's jurisdiction when we're trying to establish child support. It's going to be based on your income. Right. What the law calls resources, net resources. But in an enforcement case, well, we might look at assets because of the ability to have a court make you sell things in order to pay child support. So I'm going to screen share when it comes to this whole, what constitutes, okay, income. I'm, this isn't just for Texas, uh, Texas, Texas family code section 154.062 actually does have a long list and I just wanted to share it because there, I don't know why there's so much confusion over this on people saying, well, just because the guy has a new watch, therefore that is, uh, that means he has money. Well, okay, it might, it might, but you can't get income from a watch. Okay. It needs to be what he's making on average per month. So section B resources include a hundred percent of all wage in salary, income, and other compensation for personal services, including commissions, overtime pay, tips, bonuses, interest, dividend, royalty income, self-employment income, net rental income, with some exceptions, and all other income actually being received, including severance pay, retirement benefit income, pension income, trust income, annuities, capital gains income, social security benefits, other than SSI, U.S. military disability benefit income, other than non-service connected disability pension benefits, unemployment benefits, disability and workers' compensation benefits income, interest income from notes regardless of the source, gifts and prizes, spousal maintenance, alimony. And, so, and it, then it goes into what it, doesn't include, okay, return on principal, accounts receivables, social security, uh, benefits paid in accordance to TANF. So there's a clear, clear list in our law anyway about what child support is supposed to be based on. And so then it's just up to you know, the parties to, you know, present their best evidence. And in some cases, it'll help one party. In other cases, it might hold the other person accountable. Well, and as a self-employed person, you pay child support based on your net income, not your gross income. And that can often be quite a substantial difference. And so um, if a person files federal income tax, for example, in the United States, we have a long list of things you can deduct such as police officers and firemen, 
can deduct their dry cleaning bills. Uh, um, police officers can deduct the cost of their bullets. And so those are all legitimate business expenses and uh, uh, often reduces someone's income dramatically when you deduct all their business expenses. And that often upsets the person receiving the child support. But it is the way it is. And so um, many times a good CPA is very important on determining net income for a person because I'm self-employed and I can tell you what I gross and what I net are two different, totally different figures. And again, the child's needs makes a difference. And how many children you have? Um, I actually got a phone call recently about, well, I have 15 children. Do I have to pay child support on all of them? I'm like, well, you're going to be paying a long time. But yes, th there's no limit in Texas on if you exceed 10 children, you still have to pay child support. He thought after 10 kids, the rest were free. That's actually a, an interesting story. I am because by, but actually if there was some sort of this sort of child support exemption or tax exemption on that, maybe um, there would be um, more incentive to have more kids within the family, but Apparently not, no, neither in Poland. And I, however, when we have a modification case, we already have the child support set up. And here in Poland, you need to, ch to show material changes uh, between the previous moment the, um, the child support was established and now that you claim modification. And these material changes can um, include the change of your income, your situation, the change in the situation of the child. For example, the child stopped attending a private school with huge tuition fees. Uh, but that can also um, affect, I mean, it can be affected also by the income of the other parent who is obliged to pay alimony. So uh, let us imagine a mother got a better job with twice as much income. Maybe she can contribute more. And interestingly, in Poland, we don't have a ready formula how to calculate that. It's always the assessment of the judge. And therefore, for example, mediation is a good way to do that because you can list between yourself the child needs and then assess how you are going to be doing the split of those costs and also uh, maybe decide that some of that will be paid in kind. Yeah, so that was a good point, Natalia, about the material change circumstances. And Fran, did, didn't that sound very similar to our own law in Texas, which is that there has to be a material and substantial change in circumstances of one of the parties or the child in order to qualify for a mod, for a modification to either increase or decrease child support. So it's kind of funny how the law around the world is very, very similar. Um, when I think about modifications and whether or not there's been a change, people fight about this, parents, okay? And one parent thinks, look, I've had a job loss that's a, that qualifies as a change. I got to get it decreased. The other parent's like, oh, no, that's intentional unemployment or intentional underemployment. You can get a better job. I'm not going to change the order. So these things are litigated all the time. So good point, Natalia. Another reason why you should go to mediation to help resolve you know, the dispute. Not guaranteed, but it's a big possibility. So one of the changes I was thinking about is this change. And that's the change of a parent moving far away from a child. Will a judge consider that as a reason to decrease child support when the parent moves further away from the child? In my experience, yes, generally speaking. But everything has exceptions. And so it depends on, of course, the distance. And it depends on if, the, all the, if you were actually visiting the child. Because if you're just, you know, taken off to a different state, but yet you weren't even seeing the child, uh, there might not be a reason to decrease it. So that's just another example. I just popped into my head when we were talking about different material and substantial changes and circumstances. Well, and again, that's why I like mediation. It saves people a lot of money. And um, I just, I work with a lot of pro se litigants. That means people without attorneys. It is an option. I usually go very slow with them because I want them to think about things before they sign a mediated settlement agreement. Because in Texas, if you sign a mediated settlement agreement, it's done. 
but it offers so much more flexibility. We look at the cost of the kids, their extracurricular activities. We look at, are they gonna be in private school or public school? And what are their needs? And also that senior year of high school can be very expensive. So who's gonna help pay for the, the, um, their prom and you know all the costs associated, especially with high school students. What if they're, um, the band wants to go to Disney World and play at Disney World? I mean, all these expenses are things to consider. For example, kids that do sports where they play sports, I mean, competitively all over. I, I had a nephew who played all over several states and that was expensive. The driving, the hotel rooms, the meals, the, uh, all his equipment. And then he had trainers because he was really gifted in what he did. And so it was a whole family commitment, even though they were divorced because they spent most of their time on the road. And those are all things that families should consider. Judges sometimes don't want to consider all of that. So that's, again, why mediation is such a good alternative, because we can discuss people's thoughts, feelings, fears, and try to discuss how to make it work the best for the entire family. And then something controversial. The question is, if the judges consider the gender of the parent paying uh, the child support. Yeah, that is controversial. Uh, we all, I think we will all agree that worldwide, most instances show that uh, moms have custody and dads pay child support. That's been my experience. It's what I see every day, generally speaking. Uh, then I'm not saying anything else about that. I'm simply saying that that's generally a fact, okay? But then when it comes to let's say a mom paying child support. Do judges consider that? In our law, we're not supposed to be considering gender at all when it comes to uh, custody arrangements, stuff like that. But judges are human. Do they consider whether or not a mom is paying? And if she was a guy, if she was you know, a father paying child support, might the judge be harder on her, um, on him than on her? What are your, what are your feelings? I've had some cases at mediation, especially in the recent years where there are stay at home fathers and the moms are out making very good salaries. And so, um, again, why should the child's life be disrupted, even though the family is breaking up? <clears throat> I mean, if the father has been the one to do all the hands on day to day stuff, then uh, why should mom have primary custody? Uh, now at mediation, I don't even have to do a primary conservator. We just limit the, where the child's going to live. So that's again, why I like mediation. But um, my, in Texas, technically, Texas is a gender neutral state. And it states in the Texas family code that it's neutral. So that technically, if um, mom does not have primary custody, she should be paying dad's child support. Absolutely, Natalia, any thoughts about the gender thing? Mm, I do believe that um, it is still quite unusual to have women paying child support. And uh, I think it's uh, cultural. I have seen women who are very strongly against the entire institution of paying alimony. Uh, my personal view is that that should be yeah, the may I, may I pause you? May I pause you? I know you just mentioned alimony, but remember, especially for American audiences, we make a differentiation between child support, which is towards children, and alimony towards um, towards the ex-spouse. And I'm just saying that because um, it's it, it's important, and I just want to make sure that people clearly understand what you meant when you just said that about alimony. Thank you for that. Yes, we do. I use here and in many countries that I'm familiar with other family law system, they do say alimony for what you pay to the child monthly. So yes, this is why I am in this uh, European English, alimony will be child support. And maybe this is a good piece of knowledge so that you know, uh, because more and more there are cross-border cases where people have children and um, 
um, they date and it happens in paternity cases, paternity cases that then even terminology might differ and some people might be surprised with what they come up with. However, back to gender, um, really uh, there is a lot of women who are strongly against them paying uh, any child support. And um, I do believe that should be a part of just the uh, regular education uh, in uh, schools. So uh, I do believe that uh, everybody during their schooling uh, should learn the basics about uh, the child support. And not, I mean, how it's being calculated in detail, but that is an obligation of everybody uh, because in Poland, we do have a problem with people not paying um, child support at all. There are different, of course, institutions to help. However, that brings us to enforcement. And I wanted to ask you, uh, what do judges consider in the enforcement cases? Yeah, um, I think when a judge looks at an arrears balance and the arrears balance is 10 miles long, uh, that's kilometers for the Europeans. Um, <laughs> I think that creates a problem. Okay. Uh, no judge wants to look at a $50,000 arrears balance um, when someone wasn't paying child support plus interest. You know, to be fair, I mean, interest adds on per the principal, but that might be something that you might not want to get in front of a judge in an enforcement case because they're going to consider that very heavily, right? Um, versus if somebody's trying to enforce, let's say, a three or four thousand dollar judgment uh, or, or, or back arrears debt, um, that's something uh, that a court's still going to consider, but it's that is, but it's, but the amount is going to weigh on what they think you know should happen. Um, because in my opinion, if uh, parent A owes parent B $3,000, I'm going to tell parent A it's probably cheaper to just pay your debt off than to hire me, okay? Uh, but if you are in arrears of, let's say, $50,000 or more or even $20,000 or more, maybe it's time to negotiate a little bit and try to see what you can do to help reduce that, make the other side a lump sum offer or whatever. But judges will consider what the amount is of your debt. Absolutely. I mean, if I've had guys that are unemployed and I'm like, send in $20 every week to show you're attempting to do something. Better $20 than zero. And in uh, Texas, we have 6% interest and it accrues. I've had a gentleman who his kids were grown and he inherited, uh, he was going to inherit 40,000 from his father and he was a disabled vet and desperately needed it. And the office of the Texas attorney general swooped in and grabbed it from his, um, at, in probate and he was livid, but I couldn't get him his money because he owed the money at the 6% interest had been accruing for many, many years. And in Texas, Child support is not dischargeable at bankruptcy. I've had guys say, well, set it at whatever you want. I'll just declare bankruptcy. I go, you can declare bankruptcy, but it won't do you any good. I've also had gentlemen, and I'm just saying gentlemen, but it could be women too. If they haven't paid their child support when they apply for Social Security, Social Security will come in and withhold some of that money to go to the grown children. And it's never money of the children. It's money goes to the other parent. Because when those children were growing up, somebody had to feed, clothe, and shelter them. They still had needs. And I have seen in Texas, I had a, a gentleman who went to chiropractor school. He didn't pay his child support for four years. And he couldn't get his chiropractic license because the state of Texas would not issue it until he had paid some of that past due child support. And he was livid. And I'm like, but, you know, you just ignored your children for five years while you went to school. So these are all things that judges consider. Yeah. And um, we're going to be wrapping up, guys, yeah. at 30 Mark. Just wanted to, on the list, the only other things that we had, um, the Office of the, of the Attorney General, which you mentioned, Fran, or any 4D agency uh, administration that is in, that is put there in order to enforce, to collect, and to protect the taxpayer when it comes to children receiving 
TANF, state benefits like Medicaid or CHIP, those things as well, the judges consider very heavily. And those offices will typically win, right? They get what they want uh, because they're, they're from the government and the judge has to, you know, honor what their request is usually. So that's another thing you got to, you know, be very wary about uh, when you go up against a 4D agency, you know, who's attempting to collect uh, assigned arrears, let's say on a Medicaid case. Well, you better do everything you can to pay it off because the judge is going to consider that very, very heavily. And finally, um, I guess the impact of incarceration when it comes, Natalia, to what you asked about um, enforcement. If a judge believes that jail, that spending time in jail, even prison for prison for, for uh, criminal non-support, which a law allows, if a judge believes that that is going to affect your behavior and make you pay or take care of your debt, that is something they'll consider and that's something they'll do. Some guys might not care. Lock me up is the attitude. But most people want their liberty and their freedom, and it does work. So a court will definitely consider that as the uh, carrot and stick, and the stick when with regards to how they're going to get compliance with their court orders. Okay, if there's anything else, guys, you wanted to add before we take off? Natalia? Not really. I think we covered everything. And uh, I think that the main thing about the child support is you need to pay it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right well that wasn't the intention of the show but yes pay your child support <laughs> and uh if you need a lawyer hit us up but go to mediation because you can also resolve the whole entire thing hopefully okay guys thanks so much until Thank next you. time we'll talk soon <laughs>